Now, the first thing that I like to do when I'm taking a look at an Android app is I want to do a walkthrough of the application to get an understanding of, for one, what features exist in the application, and for two, what sort of communication is going on? Like, is it communicating with a server of any sort? Is there any information that's being sent to the server and being sent back that we might be able to leverage just to really gather information about the application and understand how we might be able to attack it? So let's take a look at this app from that perspective and see what sort of information we can find out about potential attack surfaces of it. So I can see here, I'm immediately um, set with like a login page, right? I've got a login and then I've got an option to autofill credentials. Now, in general, we can take a look at each of these features and try to determine, well, what kind of things can we do with them? What sort of things can we learn from them? So I've got my burp suite intercept right here and it's set up with my Android device. So I'll go ahead and turn this on. And let's just take a look if I press the login button, what happens? We can see it does post an HTTP request that tells us that the app is communicating over the HTTP protocol and it's posting the username as well as the password. So I'm going to send this to my repeater because I just want to see what sort of information is sent to and from the server. So um, I'll just turn off the interceptor. We'll see we get an error for invalid credentials and it doesn't let us into the app. So let's head over to our repeater and just see what happens when we actually send this request and what response we get back. When I send this request, you'll see that I get a message that says user does not exist and it shows the user that I tried to enter. Now this is quite interesting because um, typically we don't really want to tell the, pe the person that the user doesn't exist. Otherwise they're able to easily find out what users exist on this application. So from this, we've already found a very simple potential vulnerability. And then from here, I could play around with this a little bit. You know, Maybe I want to try putting in some sort of username and just see, yeah, we can confirm that it does show the username here and that it does show the message user does not exist. So that's great. Um, and I'm wondering, well, it looks like maybe this might be using SQL or some variation of it, right? Maybe if I put in like a single quote, um, do like a typical like, you know, or one equals one type SQL injection, maybe that will do something. And you'll see in general, it doesn't really seem to work. So we might need to dig a little bit further into that. Maybe there's a way to do it. It doesn't really seem like there's like an obvious way to do it. So that's the sort of things that we've learned from this. Now, if I put in a valid username, in this case, I have a valid credential that I can use to log into the application to test it. Um, let's see what ends up happening. I put in a valid username, it says wrong password. So again, this is another indication that this is a potential security concern because um, it looks like it's just going to tell us that we have a wrong password or a wrong user. If we know that we have the right user and the wrong password, it eliminates you know, some variants from that and we can try all sorts of different passwords and potentially crack this account. So this could be something that we can consider to be a simple vulnerability. Now from this as well, I can tell that um, you know, if I keep sending requests, it doesn't look like there's any limit to the number of requests that I can send, which means that this is potentially vulnerable to brute force attacks as well. So this is another thing that we can write down as a potential vulnerability that we would want to get resolved. So right off the bat, just by looking at that request, we found um, a few vulnerabilities that we're able to report to our client. So let's go ahead and log into the app and see what ends up happening. So um, from this, it's always good to capture as many requests as possible. So I'm going to capture a valid login just to see what the server sends back. So um, I'll go ahead and put in the valid username and the valid password. Um, just in case you're wondering um, if you don't have the information for the username or password for this app, it's um, the username with a capital D. So it's um, Dinesh with a capital D. And then you have an at sign and then one, two, three, and then a dollar sign. So that's the credentials for it. You can find that in the, in the readme um, or the usage guide in the code. So let's go ahead and log in with those credentials. And you can see here, I've captured this login request and I'll just go ahead and send that to my repeater. And I'll turn off my intercept and we've made it to the main page. So just to check it out, right? Let's go over and see what that valid username password looks like. You see it says correct credentials and the user is Dinesh. So, you know, it doesn't look like there's anything particularly interesting there. I was wondering to see if like maybe it sent back the password in plain text or did something weird like that. Looks like this is relatively standard. So it doesn't look like there's too much here that's really all that interesting at face value. So let's continue to look at the application and see what other things we can find. Um, you'll see the, here that there's a transfer functionality 
And there's an option inside of here for get accounts, which will show me the accounts associated with my current user. Now, again, let's see how it's getting that information. If I turn on my intercept and press get accounts, you see that it tries to get the accounts based on the username and password that's being supplied. So again, send that to my repeater and see what gets sent back. Um, see, it just says correct credentials, so get account will continue. And then it demonstrates you know, what information it's actually giving to us. So it looks like you need a valid username or password to get these account numbers. So that's something that we can learn from that. And um, you know, I could try putting in an amount here and again, try doing a transfer and just see uh, what sort of information we might pick up on. So let's try transfer and see. You'll see it puts in the username and password and it shows the from account and the to account as well as the amount. So I can send that to the repeater. And again, it will show me that it's been done successfully and it shows the amount and all of that looks to be pretty typical. So um, the fact that it takes in a username or password for the transfer means that it's probably doing uh, some sort of validation on the server side, it tells us. Um, and we could try playing around with that just to see like, um, you know, if I were to change this password to something that wasn't a valid password, would it let me do it? In this case, it gives me an internal server error. So it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to do something like this, um, but you know, if we dig in further, we might find some problems here. So this could be a potential good target for us to take a look at because we know it's communicating with the server and maybe there's a flaw where it's not verifying something properly. So this could be a good place to look for some vulnerabilities as well. Let's continue looking around and seeing what we've got. We've got the view statement button. Let's see if this is communicating with the server. We'll turn on our intercept, we'll press view statement. Doesn't look like it is. So that tells me this is probably being stored locally somewhere. It's probably somewhere local to the database. So um, that's something that we can keep in mind here that this is probably local storage because it doesn't seem to communicate at all with a web server. So um, that's something to keep in mind here. So this is local storage, it looks like. So maybe we might be able to use this potentially somewhere. We might be able to find that local storage and um, exploit it potentially. So we can keep that in mind. And the final option here is the change password option. And we still got our interceptor on. So let's try changing our password. Um, I'll just say like uh, tests one exclamation mark. Uh, and that's not quite complex enough. Just put a few more exclamation marks. Uh, put a few more symbols in. There we go. So you can see that this is supposed to change password with the username and the password. Now, this is very interesting to me because um, Typically, when you have a password reset, what you have is you have a username and then you input the old password and then the new password. And what happens server side is it will verify the login to say, okay, you have a valid username and a valid password, so then we can change the password. It looks like all this does is it takes in the username as well as the new password. It doesn't seem to verify that information for us. So when we send this, it changes the password successfully, but doesn't actually seem to verify that password. So that could be something that we could potentially exploit. So we're gonna take a look at that in a little bit more detail in a minute. I just know um, as well, when I send this password reset, you'll see that it sends me a text message. And you'll see in this text message, it shows my old password and my new password. There's two things that we've learned from this. The first thing that we've learned is that the application has the capability to send text messages. You might be able to leverage that in some way. So we'll keep that in mind. The second thing that we've learned immediately is that there's another vulnerability. And that is that it sends me my password in plain text, the old one and the new one. This tells me that it's storing the password in plain text, which is a problem, right? It should be storing the password as a hashed value rather than storing it in plain text. So that means that this is another vulnerability that we've discovered just by playing around in the application. So that's another thing to keep in mind there is that we have another vulnerability here already. So we've already chalked up two vulnerabilities just by using the application and you know looking at all the information that's sent between us and the server. Now, to sort of like accumulate all of this, um, the last thing that we have here is a feature to check if the device is rooted or not. So we'll revisit this sort of idea later when we take a look at the source code of how we might be able to circumvent that sort of uh, functionality. Now, the last thing that I want to end off with here is um, taking a look at this change password feature. Now, there's another user that I know of, and that user is Jack. And I'm wondering if we change the username to Jack and set the new password here, is this going to change Jack's password? So um, we'll take a look at this example here and try sending that. And you can see that we actually do get password change successfully. So it looks like there's no validation of this password um, reset in order to check if the 
current user is actually logged in or you know if they're using a valid password or anything like that it looks like we're able to change the password um, without any sort of verification so there we found a third vulnerability that we're able to report. So right off the bat, just by looking at the functionality of the application and playing around with some of the HTTP requests, we've found three vulnerabilities. So this is the idea of what we're doing when we're trying to look at um, the actual application, just um, getting an overview of the information that's available inside of it. Um, and in the next videos, we'll take a look at some other ways that we can gather information through the actual source code of the application through decompiling the APK. So we found some surface level vulnerabilities, we found some surface level issues. Now we're gonna dig into the code and really see what we can find in this application that might be able to be exploited.